the Smith & Wesson model 3913 Ladysmith 9mm traditional double action pistol on Riders Range. We shot it, we're going to talk more about it and give you a little history about the Ladysmith and the 3913 in general. Stick around. <laughs> So I want to welcome you to Riders Range. Thanks for stopping in uh, to join us while we talk about the Lady Smith, the Smith and Wesson 3913, and uh, not the most pristine example by any means. But these are kind of hard to find nowadays. Of course, they're also not super popular. There's uh, only three Lady Smiths that I found on the auction sites right now, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about price in uh, just a few minutes. This is a variation of the 3913. The 3913 basically ran from uh, 1989 to yeah, somewhere around 2000 or so. It's the third generation Smith & Wesson type of action. It is a single stack, traditional double action first shot, uh, decocker uh, type of uh, pistol. Eight shots in the magazine, 9mm as I mentioned. And uh, the original 3913, I'll try to roll a picture in of what those look like, were a little bit different shape. They uh, had a, a, a squared off frame on it. And uh, in uh, 1990, uh, they came out with a ladysmith with the idea that they would taper the, the uh, slide just a little bit, make it a little more attractive, provide these um, Delrin one-piece grips to go along with it in the same basic color as the, as the aluminum frame and uh, a little bit off from the almost a two-tone with a stainless steel slide on it. And uh, it proved to be a, a popular gun, and uh, uh, actually it's popular enough that uh, in The Walking Dead, uh, Andrea initially used this, and eventually the gun went on to T-Dog. So it did have some movie fame, and it was in a, a few other uh, movies uh, along the way. But uh, apparently there were enough uh, men who liked it, but didn't want the idea of having a lady smith. So Smith & Wesson in uh, 19... Uh, 91 came out with the exact same thing, 3913 called an NL, 1339 for non-ladysmith. Some people also mean uh, will say that it meant non-logo, but effect effectively the exact same gun just didn't say ladysmith on it. I think that continued until somewhere around 1995. And again, this is a traditional double action, however, it also has a magazine disconnect and the gun is empty. So with a magazine in it, typical uh, Smith & Wesson decocking safety and push it back up and you're back in double action mode. Now the Ladysmith had a single sided safety. I've seen a couple of these in, uh, in images where they had a, um, a right side on it also. The non-Ladysmith had, uh, had a right side. The uh, TSW, the, the tactical Smith & Wesson, also had a right side safety. The, the original 3913 had a right side, but the Ladysmith was left side only. And double action pull on this uh, is about Ten and a half pounds, not bad. Um, there's uh, not not an, uh, not any stacking. It's a nice even pull, and of course, once it's fired, you're in single action. Really short reset. I mean, real, real short. Well, it help if I had the hammer back. So double action, ten and a half. Reset is right there. A uh, little bit of over travel, not a lot. Uh, goes into about a five pound single action, which really isn't too bad. I'm just, I've never been a fan of having two different trigger pulls. I know that uh, there's an awful lot of guns out there that uh, have them, and a lot of people are very comfortable with them. I'm not one of them. Uh, again, eight round magazine. Um, this came with one magazine, but I managed to find a second one and I managed to find a couple of uh, aftermarkets that are not labeled Smith and Wesson. And um, this one is the aftermarket there is not also, um, but it still appears to be original factory with the follower um, base plates the same, just doesn't have the Smith & Wesson logo on it. But eight round magazines, and it really compares uh, favorably with several other guns. Let's look at Smith & Wesson's very own uh, shield, and again, empty. This is the original generation shield, and this is also an 8 plus 1 gun. And the uh, Ladysmith is a, is a nice light gun. It weighs in at um, 28.7 ounces. That's with uh, 8 rounds in the uh, magazine, 1 round in the chamber, 124 grain ammunition. Put that side by side with the shield, which is just a little bit shorter. Not much. Uh, height is 
pretty close when you've got the eight round magazine in here. And they're really relatively comparable guns. Of course, the shield is a striker fired single action only and weighs in at 24.9 ounces uh, with eight plus one. So you're almost four ounces lighter for the shield. I had to compare it with my absolute favorite, my Dan Wesson ECO 9mm, because these guns are almost identical size wise. Three and a half inch barrel on both of them, and the Smith & Wesson barrel, like most 9mm these days, is a fully ramped barrel, and uh, of course bull barrel type with a full length guide rod but compares favorably size-wise with the uh, officer size 1911s. And even if you look at the, the thickness of the profile, they're relatively the same. The Smith looks just a hair bigger, but I don't think it is. I've never put mics on it, but um, I'm happy with uh, just comparing it and saying, yeah, it looks or feels the same. So again, about the same size. Unfortunately, my Dan Wesson with same 8 plus 1 comes in at 32.3 ounces. That's a little heavier. Uh, but we can also compare it favorably with the uh, the Glock 48. And again, it is empty. So we put it side by side with the 48. They're again roughly the same thickness. Um, the 48 has just a hair longer slide because again the Smith is only a three inch barrel. And they're about the same height. Now the, uh, the Glock 48 comes with a 10 round magazine and with 10 plus 1 um, it weighs in at uh, 25.8 ounces, however the, you can do something with the Glock you can't do with the, the Smith and that's put in a flush 15 round magazine and with that 15 round magazine we're still only talking um, 27.8 ounces so uh, the Glock 48 with 15 plus 1 is still lighter than this Lady Smith, however for the time, this Ladysmith was a, uh, a relatively light gun, and it still carries very nicely. Um, when I uh, sighted this thing in at 15 yards on that 3-inch circle, which is typical, uh, I had a little bit of lateral dispersion. My uh, vertical was uh, was pretty good. These Novak-style uh, sights are 3-dot, and uh, they can be drift adjustable. You know my thoughts on 3-dot sights, but they, uh, these seem to be okay. I did have a little bit of trouble with uh, um, the 12-yard... Uh, plates. Uh, I ended up um, not hitting all of them like I thought I should, but I think that's me, not the gun. Just not getting used to the double versus uh, single uh, single action. Um, I didn't have any problem gripping the gun, so I can't complain about that. And by the way, this has uh, uh, checkering on the uh, on the front strap and a texture on the uh, the one-piece grips. It even has checkering on the front of the trigger guard. Uh, yeah, that was the thing back in the, in the day, I guess. Um, but then when it came to 25 yards, I, uh, I, I wasn't hitting everything that I thought I should. Uh, I just, again, I'm just not used to the, the way the trigger feels on this gun, uh, but it's accurate enough. Um, on the other hand, when I reached out to 50 yards, um, I got seven of my eight shots connected, even on the shooting at the 10-inch plate. So it's um, accuracy, okay. Um, would I still carry this? Yeah, it's been reliable. Um, again, the finish isn't the greatest on it, because uh, it, it has been well used. Um, but it's a reliable firearm. So far it's eaten everything I've thrown at it. The uh, uh, I can drop the magazine without having to change my grip on it, uh, although it's not ambidextrous at all. Um, again, it's uh, other than the fact it's double action first shot, which I've already mentioned, I'm, I'm not a fan of that, but yeah, the gun does shoot okay. So that's just a quick look at the Smith & Wesson 3913 Lady Smith, and if I could find a 3913 NL, I would really like to do that, but those are pretty scarce. Right now, a, a 3913 Lady Smith is going to be anywhere from a little under 400 for a, a gun in about this condition. I've seen them in pristine condition as high as $900, but you can figure anywhere from 4 to to 7 for a decent condition, if you can find them, if you're at all interested in this particular type of gun. Now there is uh, one, as we're recording this, there's one on the auction site right now that's got several bids on it. Of course it's uh, a pristine condition with the box, the whole bit, and the original uh, soft case that the Lady Smith came in. Um, that right now uh, looks like it might end up going for about $900.
So if I if you have to uh, fight off anybody in the the Walking Dead, yeah, maybe the thirty nine thirteen Ladies method uh, would work for that. Uh, again, not a not a bad little gun. Though there certainly are. Um, better selections on the market right now that have the same capacity and uh, are as accurate and as easy to use but uh, again from the dark corners of the safe it's a it's a fun gun to bring out if you like this video we do appreciate a thumbs up if uh, you have any uh, any other social media platforms that you're on that you can share videos we appreciate it if you share this one uh, if you haven't already done so please subscribe click on the notifications bell so you know what's coming up on riders range comments on this video down below are certainly appreciated comments on anything else things you'd like to see happen on riders range send them to info at ridersrange.com so from the dark corners of the safe out here to riders range the smith and wesson 3913 ladysmith thanks for joining us